Hey everyone, I'm Dan Spada, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make engaging and interactive PowerPoint presentations using iSpring Suite. iSpring Suite is a tool that many teachers have been telling me about over the last couple months. I had never heard of this before, uh, but once teachers started telling me how they were using this in their classrooms, I decided to check it out. Now, I know many teachers started using it when they were teaching online during the pandemic, and they liked it so much they're still using it in their classrooms today. Uh, so I figured I'd make a video and show you what I've learned from some of the other teachers about how they're using this with their PowerPoint presentations. Uh, so iSpring... Uh, can be found at ispringsolutions.com. So once you download iSpring Suite, you'll notice when you open up PowerPoint that you'll have a new tab at the top that says iSpring Suite 11. When you click on that, it will have all the tools that iSpring Suite offers you. Now, I'm using a presentation that I've created a while back. It's called Teaching Students to Become Expert Researchers and Avoid Fake News, Disinformation, Misinformation, uh, which has become a very popular video and uh, presentation for me on uh, Teachers Pay Teachers. However, you can use any presentation that you've ever made in PowerPoint, or you can create something brand new from scratch uh, pretty quickly, pretty easily, and very professionally with these tools. That's something that I was really impressed by. I know this tool is used by a lot of people to create courses. Um, however, teachers are using it to create that interactive um, presentation that they're using with their students. So let's quickly go through all of the different things that you can do with iSpring Suite. You'll notice at the top, these are uh, tools, uh, record audio, record video, and manage narration. These are great if you're doing screencasting or if you just want to kind of record your presentation so you can share it with students who aren't there or who are learning virtually or for any other need. And what I love is if you try to use um, the screencasting tools, it makes it very easy to create something that looks really professional and you don't have to have a lot of video editing skills or anything like that to make it look really nice. So I'm gonna click on record video just so you get an idea. So one of the things that I really like is when you click on record video narration, uh, it brings up, once you get everything set up, your webcam and your um, your microphone, it shows you your notes that you have in the notes section. So as I record, I can see my slides and I can also see my notes uh, so that I don't have to try to click back and forth. It just makes it really easy. And I'm just gonna stop just so you can sort of see what this looks like. Now when I click on manage narration at the top, so now you'll see that I can start to manage what I this record, looks like. I can preview I can it. See my slides, and I can also. And so it just makes it really easy to create something that looks really professional for your students. And I also know that some teachers have told me that they um, record themselves doing the presentations for students that have special needs um, so that they can have that, they can watch it back if they uh, need to watch it again after class, things like that. So lots of different options. You'll see in the next section, we have our quizzes, our interactions, role playing, and screen recordings. It also makes it super easy for you to insert YouTube links and uh, web objects. So I'll quickly go into quizzes because I feel like from what I've heard from teachers, that's one of the most popular things that teachers are using this for. And when you click on quiz, you can decide between a graded quiz or a survey so that you can get like real-time feedback. Uh, there are really nice built-in tutorials for all of this. However, I'm just going to show you all of the different quizzes that you can insert into your uh, presentation. So we'll go up to questions here. And you'll see there's lots of different types of questions. And when you hover over it, it gives you an example of one of the questions. So there's multiple choice. You've got multiple responses where you can select more than one. True or false. You've got short answer. Numeric, where they can only enter uh, numbers. You've got the uh, sequence tool where the you give the student choices and they have to put them in sequence, you know, one, two, three, four, or, you know, moving the things around. You've also got matching, which I think is really great. Matching, you also have fill in the blanks. You have select from list where you can do a drop down at different parts and then give the student your different options. You have drag the words. You have hotspot, which I think is also a really cool tool. So if you had like a map or you wanted students to click on a certain part to show their understanding of something, uh, drag and drop. 
You also have a Likert scale. And the last thing is essay. So these are super easy to put right into your presentation. Um, and again, I won't go through these, but I just like that it make it really easy. Click on the question you want. You can type the question, put in all the answers. And as I said earlier, it's automatically graded. Um, or you could do a survey where you get feedback from the students. And another really great feature is at the bottom, you have feedback and branching. So if a student gets something correct or incorrect, you can customize the message that they see as well as what the next slide they'll go to is. So if they get something correct, you can, um, you know, choose the response and then clicking on those dots, you can say, okay, you got this correct. Now, when you go to the next slide, you're going to go to a different place. Or if it's incorrect, you can say, okay, I'm sorry you didn't get this correct. But instead of going to the next question, you can say, okay, you know, you're now you're going to go back to this where they can find the information that they needed to answer that question correctly. And you can give them another chance to get that question correct. They also have this really neat role playing tool, which I've not seen this before in any other tools. Um, so if you click on new role play, you can use their library to create a really neat um, looking tool for the students. So I'm gonna create a new scene and I'm gonna create an interaction between two characters that I'm gonna create. Um, so I'm just gonna create something, I don't know, uh, really quickly. Did you study last night? And then I can select character and I can actually use one of the people they have in their library. So uh, we'll just select the first person here. I can s choose the emotion, whether it's happy, kind of like puzzled, unhappy, angry. So we'll just do normal. And then I'm going to add a reply. So, you know, if I wanted to find out if my student studied last night, no, I forgot. Or yes, of course. And then I can close that. Also, there are different images. So you, if you want to really make it look nice, you could find like a different background. You could download one from the internet. You could use one from the library here. Um, I will just pick this, it looks nice. So we'll do that. And now I'll just preview it. So this is what my slide would look like. Here's the teacher. Did you study last night? Uh, no, I forgot. Yes, of course. And so it's just a way for you to get some feedback from your students um, and to do it in a really just fun, professional looking way. And again, you can also uh, figure out what you want to do with that if the student says yes or the student says no. One of the other nice features is this uh, slide templates. And I know many teachers like myself spend way too much time trying to find the right template to go along with what I'm teaching. And what's nice is iSpring has many built-in um, slide templates already in here. And what's nice is that they also match with some of the other tools that are offered as well. So you can kind of browse through there. Some of these are premium, um, so you have to have the iSpring Suite Max, but there are several in here that are free um, with just the regular iSpring Suite. And you'll find the same thing with the characters, backgrounds, objects, and icons. Some are free, some you need the upgrade to access. But if you wanted to add in different characters, um, you know, it's very easy to do that. You'll see you can add them in and you can insert them right into your scene or into your uh, slide. So just, it looks really professional. It's a nice little touch. Another really nice feature is you can publish this. And whether you're using iSpring's um, learning management software or you're using your own or something else, you can publish and then you'll get a URL. So you can just copy and paste that right into your LMS and share it with your students. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, as you know from my channel, I don't usually uh, review products that have a cost associated with them, but because so many teachers have told me that they're using iSpring already, I did want to cover this uh, because I know they offer an academic discount for teachers and districts and schools. And I also know that some teachers have told me what they did to get this their district paid for is they went to either their principal or a um, department head or you know one of the specialists that they work with and went through how this benefits the students and then that person went and advocated on their behalf and other teachers just bought it themselves. But uh, as I said, I did wanna show you that and kind of go over that and as well. And if you do 
uh, and are interested in purchasing iSpring Suite, make sure you click where it says get an academic discount so that you do get that discount. So as you can see, there are so many different benefits that iSpring Suite offers to teachers. I know there are a lot of different tools that can do some of these components, but I haven't come across a tool that can do all of these things together. And what I've heard from teachers is it just makes their lives easier because they save so much time and they're able to really get that feedback from their students as they're going through and creating their slides. They're able to get um, you know, that feedback of are the students understanding this are they understanding that do they need more of this and then being able to redirect them is a huge benefit to teachers so if a student doesn't show that understanding I can send them back to this place uh, so that I know they're gonna review that material again before they can go on so um, lots of different options here if you'd like to see me show you some more of these and do more an in-depth uh, more in-depth tutorial please let me know in the comments section below and if you know of any teachers that might benefit from using this please feel free to share this video with them as well and if you haven't already please make sure you give this video a big thumbs up and if you haven't already subscribed to the EdTech show please make sure you do that and click on the notification bell so you get notified every time there's a new video thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time